संत कृपाए सुख उपजे संत कृपा थी सरे काम संत कृपा थी पामीए पूरन पुरुषोत्तम धाम काम दुधा कल्प तरु पारस चिंता मनि चार संत समान ते एक नहीं में मन मा करियो विचार हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय गण श्याम महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ऑलमाइटी लॉर्ड स्वामी नारायण और डिवाइन पूज्यपाद गुरुजी एंड ऑल ऑफ यू डिवोटीज माय हम्बल जय स्वामी नारायण as we say goodbye to the year 2013 and welcome the 2000 as a year 2014 there are many things that come to mind many many people make resolutions some kind of changes that they want to make in their life in order to become better person or in order to become better in society or just in order to become better as an individual in the world people make resolutions short term and long term short term resolutions can be from anywhere from getting straight a's this semester to getting into a good college this year and long term resolutions may even come out to letting go of something that one's parents do not like or even becoming a doctor but when it comes into spiritual terms I want to talk to you about something that one needs to do in order to become a good individual not only in the world but in the spiritual life and move forward as well. Now each and every one of us has a nature. Some have good nature, some have bad nature, some have a combination. now nature that we possess that is bad that takes a, takes us away from god is the one that we want to focus on today our nature is the cause of our misery different people have different natures some inspire and some disturb now upon that Let us make a resolution for this year to let go of a nature that Bhagwan his ekantik saint and devotees that live around you do not like. Now, I want to specifically talk to you about a nature that some possess, some may not possess, but even those who do not possess this particular lit- particular nature can still get something out of this lecture today now i specifically want to talk to you about a vach number kadada first chapter 10th vach number the title is the ungrateful sevakram now first i want to read and then we'll talk thoroughly about what nature bhagwan does not like and what nature we should keep so that bhagwan will appreciate us swami narayan hare on makshar shudhi 13th samant 1876 shri jimarj was sitting in dada khachar's darbar in gadara he was dressed entirely in white clothes at that time an assembly of paramansas as well as devotees from various places had gathered before him thereupon shri jimarj said Now 
Bhagwan is going to narrate a story from his past when he was Nilkan Verney from the age 11 to 18. The seven years when Sriji Maharaj or Bhagwan Swaminarayan was Nilkan Verney, he traveled around India. Now, at that time, there was many, many incidents that Bhagwan had been through and Bhagwan had witnessed. Now, out of one of those incidents, Bhagwan is going to share with us what he experienced and what he learned from meeting a person called Sevakram. So I'm going to continue to read in the words of Bhagwan the whole story and then we'll learn more after. Thereupon, Sri Jumard said, Once when I was traveling from Ventakatri to Shetubandh Rameshwar, I encountered a sadhu by the name of Sevakram. He had studied the Srimad Bhagavad and the other Purans, but it so happened that during his journey he fell ill. He had a thousand rupees worth of gold coins with him, but since he had no one to nurse him, he began to cry. I counseled him, saying, Do not worry about anything. I shall serve you. On the ark on the outskirts of the village was a banana grove which had a banyan tree within which a thousand ghosts lived. Because that sadhu had become extremely ill and was unable to walk any further, I felt extreme pity for him. I prepared a bed of banana leaves one and a half feet higher, high under that banyan tree. As the sadhu was suffering from dysentery and was passing blood, I would wash him and attend to him. The sadhu would give me enough money, enough of his money to buy sugar, sakar, ghee, and grains for himself. I would bring the ingredients, cook them, and then feed him. As for myself, I would go to the village for my meals. On some days, when I did not receive any food from the village, I had to fast. Despite this, that sadhu never once said to me, I have enough money. Cook for both of us so that you may dine with me. After serving the sadhu for two months in this way, he began to recover. Therefore, as we walked from Shetubandh, Rameshwar, he made me carry his belongings weighing one mund. Whereas he would walk with only a rosary in his hand. By then, he was healthy and capable of digesting half a kilogram of ghee. Yet he would make me carry his load while he walked empty-handed. In actual fact, my nature was such that I would not even keep a handkerchief with me. But respecting him as a sadhu, I walked carrying the, his belongings, weighing 20 kilograms. Although I served that sadhu and helped him recover, he did not offer me even a single paisa worth of food. Therefore, realizing him to be ungrateful, I abandoned his company. In this way, a person who does not appreciate favors done by others should be known as an ungrateful person. Now, there's still a small paragraph remaining, but that's off of a different subject. So first I want to focus on this very story. Now, Bhagwan, he explains the whole story where when he was traveling in the forest, he came across a sadhu by the name of Sevakram. Now that sadhu became ill, so Bhagwan felt pity and he started to serve him. But that sadhu had money enough money to buy food and grains for both him and Neil Converney, yet he was greedy and ungrateful that he only gave Neil Converney money so that they could buy, he could only buy food for one person. Bhagwan tolerated that, yet he made him food, yet he still continued. Sevakram did not realize that Nilkan Verni is doing my services, yet I'm not giving him anything. 
in return. Such was the ungrateful nature of Sevakram. He even made Bhagwan carry 20 kgs after he recovered from his disease. And when they were walking, he made Nilkan Rani carry the load, yet he did not appreciate what services he had done for him in the past. Now, the nature that Bhagwan does not like, that Bhagwan is focusing in this very Vachnamrut, is the nature or of being ungrateful. Now, there's grateful versus ungrateful. Now, Bhagwan gave us a perfect idea of pretty much how a person can be ungrateful. For example, any kind of favor someone does for you, yet you do not appreciate it, it doesn't really have to pertain to if you or if someone else does something good for you. You don't have to physically give them something, but you can appreciate and also you can do some kind of favor in return. It's not about only physical matters or belongings. For example, if one gives you a house to live in for a couple days, then you give him $20 in return. No, it's not that kind of exchange. It's more of a mental basis where if you have a mental aspect where if you appreciate what someone has done for you, automatically you would want to do something for that person. You would want to help them out in some way. If they're in some kind of trouble, you would want to help them out. Or even just in general, if they're even if they're doing okay, you'd still want to do something for them because they did something good for you. In the same way, in this story, Bhagwan explains that Sevakram was an ungrateful person because even Nilkan Verni, meaning Srijimar, served him for all this time, yet he did not appreciate any of his services. And off of that, even after he recovered, he still used Bhagwan himself. He used him for his own benefit, for his own selfish motive. Due to that, Bhagwan abandoned his company. Now, as we were talking about, grateful versus being ungrateful. Now, we talked about how one should not possess an ungrateful nature and how it's kind of uh, something that Bhagwan does not like. But let's talk about the other side, being grateful. Now, it is the year of 2014. In all this time, we've been in this religion, or we have joined this religion, or let's just even put it this way, we have been on this earth for a certain period of time. Now, there's always something that one has to cherish or appreciate or one is grateful about. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. The nature of or the resolution of letting go of one's ungrateful nature versus having a grateful nature is also very important. What should we be grateful about? First, before I tell you, take time and think to yourself, what am I grateful about or what should I be grateful for? Because there's many, many things and people can name thousands of things. But I just want to give you three things that are the most essential for that you should be grateful for because if you did not have these three things, then there would be no existence without them. Let's just put it that way. So, number one, the human body. Now, the human body is something that we should definitely be grateful about. Reasons? Number one, that's the way we live. We need a human body to live. We have a soul inside of us. We are the soul, we can say. But how can the soul be maintained without a body? It needs some kind of body. But the particular body, the human body, is most important. 
because through the human body, one can achieve God. That's the most important factor. Not because through this body, we can enjoy the sense object pleasures of the world. Not because of, from this human body, we can enjoy the company of our family, relatives, etc. Not because of this human body that we can appreciate our own self. No. But because we have received this human body, we can achieve God. Because out of all the species, there's 8.4 million types of life forms. Out of all those life forms, the only life form that one can achieve God is the human life. The human has intelligence more than any other species. That's a scientific proven fact and also a spiritual proven fact. That's number one. Reasons? Because the humans can distinguish between right and wrong. An animal cannot distinguish between right and wrong. Nevertheless, an animal may have feelings, may develop feelings, but due to the lack of intelligence, it cannot move forward in the path of realizing what is right and wrong. On the other hand, the human body is the very body that one can realize between right and wrong, one can distinguish, one can acquire knowledge, store that knowledge in the brain, and then use that knowledge to excel. Moving forward is very important, and that can only be done in this body. That's why one should appreciate God for giving us this human body so we can have a chance to achieve Him. And through this human body, one can do spiritual endeavors. For example, one can acquire wisdom about God. One can acquire dharma, meaning code of conduct. One can follow. In the Shikshapatri, Bhagwan states that my followers, blank, 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 X, Y, Z. My followers, meaning Bhagwan is not talking about animals because he knows animals are not valid. Animals cannot follow any kind of commands because of their lack of knowledge, because of pretty much their species type. But Bhagwan is talking about the human body, a person who has attained a human body. Such a person who is a follower of mine should not eat onion or garlic. Due to this, one would be one would become blissful in this life and the life after, Bhagwan says at the end. I just gave you an example, but one can follow the code of conducts. One can acquire affection for God. If you show the form of God, the idol of God, to a cow or a sheep, will they develop affection? No. They don't even know who that is. No one has even told them who this is. But if you show someone who has some kind of affection or some kind of good, holy presence, holy nature, and bring them to a temple and show them the idol of God, then one day, sooner or later, one can definitely, that person will definitely acquire some kind of affection for God, develop some kind of affection for God. That's why one should appreciate the human body. But we appreciate the human body because through the human body, we can enjoy the pleasures of the world. And that's our big mistake. Science has made this kind of calculation where it has said that if you take each and every vital organ of the body, the heart, liver, stomach, eyes, any kind of vital organ. There is no amount, there is no figure you can put towards each and every vital organ. Why? Because it's nearly impossible to replicate it because God has given us one human body, one heart, one liver, meaning it's impossible to replicate. 
if you put all the vital organs together and try to put a figure around the human body, it comes out to a figure which is beyond even saying. You can say there is no price. Why? Because it's impossible to replicate, because it's God's gift to us. That's why we should appreciate this body. That's number one. So, for this year, 2014, one should appreciate one's human life. Not to enjoy in the pleasures of the world, but to attain God. Bhagwan has given us this gift. Bhagwan is not even charging us for this human body. If he charged us, would we have enough money to give him back? Would we be able to do enough spiritual endeavors to pay him back? No, we're in debt with God, yet we don't know it. Bhagwan does not even say that you have breathed breath this time or you have opened your eyes this much time. So due to that, I'm, I will charge you this much money. Just like how one has a water bill or a heating bill or a utility bill that comes every month or internet bill, any kind of bills that come every month, does Bhagwan give a bill out to you every month for this human body? No. That's why you should appreciate it and do something positive in a positive manner and move forward. That's the main idea, moving forward. Moving on, number two. After receiving this human body, association of an ekantik sadhu. Now, even before that, I can say, one should have this, this sampradai or this religion also in mind. So, after receiving the human body, one should appreciate even entering or Bhagwan giving us his religion, the Swaminarayan Sampradaya, to us. Because with this religion, obviously one can, name, one can gain knowledge of Bhagwan, who he is, how his nature is. But to do that, in order, for example, after you already entered into the Swaminarayan Sampradaya, Swaminarayan sect, after you go to a temple every week, yet who is going to help you realize who God is? You've, you are already in the environment, but inside the environment, who's going to help you grow? Who's going to help you develop? That's the Akantic saint. Without the Akantic saint, nothing is possible. By associating with such an Akantic saint, temples are built. By association, by the Akantic saint, murtis, meaning the idols of God, are established. By Akantic saints, scriptures are written. By Akantic saints, devotees are made. By Akantic saints, other saints are also made. Meaning, everything resides in the association of an Akantic saint. What do I mean by Akantic? Singular-minded, God-realized, self-realized saint. Now, saint does not only have to be in a male in saint clothes. No. If one has realized God, if one has constant communion with God, if one is ekantik, then one is also such a saint that I am mentioning right now. Such association with such a saint is the very primary element of realizing one's atma and also realizing God. Vrta 11 chapter in the Vajnamrit. By having affection for that saint, by having affection for that saint, the gates of liberation are open. Nidara 1st chapter 54th Vajnamrit. What else can I say but after this human body, number two is the Ekantic saint for sure. Because through him, one can realize Bhagwan. First and foremost, if we have this body, we can have a chance to attain God. 
after that, after we receive this body, we need a guide to get across to the other side, right? That's when the role of the Akantic saint comes into play. When we receive a guide and he takes us there, that's the only way we reach that particular area from point A to point B. We all want to go to Akshardham. We all want to realize Bhagwan, But we try to do it ourselves, And that's where our problem is. People become doctors in this world. They study eight years. But show me one person that has become a doctor without a professor. Out of those eight years, show me one person who has become a doctor without a single professor. No one. That's why just like a professor is needed, not a professor, professors, plural, is needed in order to become a doctor in the same way, in the spiritual manner. An ikandik sat, satpurush is needed in order to help one realize God. And we should appreciate his association because with his association, everything is gained, just like I have mentioned. With this association, one also can become ekantik. Gadara, first chapter, 60th Vacharam, Sri Jamarat says that in, one can become ekantik by also serving in ekantik satpurush. One can follow ekantik dharma by also serving the person who himself follows ekantik dharma. So, there is no better way or no better way but just one single way to please Bhagwan is to associate with the Ekantik Satpurush because Bhagwan lives inside of that Ekantik Satpurush due to that whatever that Satpurush is saying Bhagwan himself is also speaking through him that's why his glory is so great because we can't directly just go and meet God go and talk to him but Definitely we can through associating with the Akantic saint. If we talk to the Akantic saint and that saint talks back to us, we should realize that Bhagwan has spoke from inside of him. If we touch that Akantic saint, then we should realize I have touched Bhagwan himself. Maybe it's indirect, but that's not the point. But the point is that saint has full connection with God. Due to that, we should appreciate Him. We should serve Him just like God. Because Bhagwan Himself constantly resides inside of His heart. And finally, number three, we should appreciate Bhagwan Swaminare. You're probably wondering, why did you put God at last? Why didn't you put him at number one or even at number two? And why didn't you put the Ekantik Satpurush at number three instead of number two? The reason for that is who's going to help you realize God? Number two is meaning the Ekantik Satpurush. If you did not have him and if you just had an idol of God in front of you, that's not going to help you realize Bhagwan is this great. Bhagwan is a supreme, Bhagwan Swaminarayan is the supreme Lord, the Lord of Lords, the causes of cause, everything, all his great glory. If you put God at number two and you put the Akantik Satpurush at number three, then who's going to help you realize him? But, the reason why I put the Gandhik Satpurush at number two and number three I put Bhagwan is because through the association of that saint, one will be able to realize God. That's the main point. In Vachramrut, Gadara, middle chapter, ninth Vachramrut, Bhagwan himself talks about what kind of faith one ha should have. One should have such faith that I have attained the very form of God 
who reigns supreme, who forever possessed a divine form, and is the avatari, the causes of the avatars. This is the glory that one should possess. Even after attaining Bhagwan, if one does not realize him to be supreme or how he exactly is, then it's a waste. For example, we know the president of the United States is Barack Obama. Now his title is president, correct? But suppose we give him the title of a secretary or a treasurer. How would that make him feel? Especially when one knows that he is a president, yet one makes the mistake or one knowingly says that our secretary is Barack Obama or our treasurer is Barack Obama. How would that make Barack Obama feel? He knows, Barack Obama knows he is the president of the United States. Yet we are giving him a title that is second to him or that's not even compared to him. In the same way, after knowing that Bhagwan, Bhagwan Swamiran is our Lord, is our God, we should understand him to be supreme, the cause of all the incarnations, and also the one who causes everything to happen. Only due to that, Bhagwan would also become happy upon us. So these are the three things for the year 2014 we should appreciate. Number one, our human body. Number two, the association of the Ekantik Sat Purush. And number three, Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself. Due to this, our whole year will be exhilarated. Our whole year would be full of enthusiasm. We'll not, we'll not become saddened by anything, no matter what kind of obstacles we may have in our life especially in this year of 2014. But if we have these three essential things, if we're grateful for these three things, then definitely, if there's a thousand obstacles that are going to come your way, they'll be all destroyed because of the power of Bhagwan Swamiran and his Ekantik Saint. Therefore, realize their glory, understand who they are, and associate to elevate in life. Hare Krishna Maharaj Nije Shri Patim Shri Dharam Sarvadevishwaram Bhakti Dharam Atmanam Vasudevam Hare Madhavam Kesavam Gambadam Karam Swami Narayanam Nilakantham Bhaje Hare Krishna Maharaj Nije